Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today we are going to have some fun sketching some little fairy mushroom houses. Uh, I have done a video before where it is been on little labels, so we've worked with a really narrow uh, kind of piece of paper, so to speak. So this time I thought we would use some bigger pages and create some cute little villages. So I've been sketching away, having some fun playing with some compositions. Uh, here's a little row. And these are fun because when, you, when you've when you drawn them, you can shrink them down, you can blow them up. Um, so if you wanted, you could shrink this right down and put it along, say, the edge, you know, the edge of your, your book here. And you can get a lot of uses out of your drawings. Um, so you don't have to just use the original. You can photocopy and manipulate it if you have software to do so. Um, these images that I have here, these four, will be on my Etsy shop uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel. And uh, you can use them as a reference as well for your own sketches. And you can also print them off, color them in, and uh, use them however you like. So I'm going to show you how to do it though. So if you're interested in doing your own, draw along with me. So grab yourself some pens or p pencils and some paper and we're going to doodle. So here's a cute little one with a little village here, little pathways. Um, I really enjoyed drawing this one. So I guess these are oyster. I think they're an oyster type of mushroom where they kind of grow on top of each other. And then I just put windows and doors and I thought that was so cute. So if I could, I started stairs here and then I thought if I could stretch them out in another drawing, we could put stairs going up to each door. That would be so cute. What a fun, fun way to manipulate some little mushrooms into some fairy sketches for a little fairy book. So here's a little strip of them. Um, and again, just each one has its own character. So let's start. Let's, let's doodle. So I got some scraps here and that's pretty much all I ever use. Now, sometimes I use a sketchbook, but very rarely. And I just like to kind of use up my scraps and that way I'm not stressed. So if I screw up, I just toss it. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm going to use my uh, Micron 03 here, it's an archival and a uh, waterproof ink, as well as my Uniball uh, Vision, which is also a waterproof ink. Sorry about my nail, I've been uh, painting and that's acrylic paint I cannot get out. I do shower, I promise. <laughs> um, so let's start. Uh, let's start with some cute little fairy houses. So I'm kind of going to work on this guy here because I kind of like the two together. So I'm going to start with my Micron here and let's start doodling. So you want to kind of figure out your composition of you want to draw the house in front and the details in the front first and then work your way to the back of the of the picture. So uh, once you've drawn a black line, you can't draw through it without seeing that black line. Now, if you're using pencil, of course, you can make adjustments. But uh, I like to start with the mushroom in front. So I have done some videos on how to draw a mushroom. This is more of a whimsical take on mushrooms. So this micron is drying out. I go through these like crazy. So I'm gonna start with the two little half circles here and then I'm gonna put a window right in the middle like a dormer. And what's fun about these videos is, uh, these sketches I mean, is that you can walk around your neighborhood and kind of get a take on people's houses and the, the architectural features that you can incorporate into your drawings. So you can slow me uh, down, you can speed me up, you can uh, do whatever you like here when you're following along drawing with me. I just want you guys to pick up a pencil and go for it. Don't be don't be scared. Uh, I get a lot of comments saying I can't sketch, I can't draw. Well, you got to start somewhere if it's something you want to do. Um, you have to want to draw, and you have to want to learn. And it's like any process in life; it's just practice and trial and error. So for every one sketch that I like, I've probably thrown out about three. <laughs> and that's okay, no big deal. I'm gonna put a little board and batting on this house. And I'm gonna darken up my roof line. So I'm not gonna explain every 
line I'm making here. You can just pause the video and kind of catch up or add elements that you want on there. So now I'm going to put the bottom half of the mushroom. So I'm going to do like a slight curve and bring it down. And I'm going to stop because I want a railing here. I'm going to put a little railing. It's not accurate, but it's fun. I mean, accurate. How accurate can you get with a, a, a window in your, in your mushroom? You know, so <laughs> it's playful is what it is. I'm just got a little side profile on that window just uh, to show that the window goes back a little bit, a little three dimension there. So then I'm gonna put the door in here because you need a door to the balcony. I'll put some little indication of wood. You put a window in that door if you want. And just get the railings going on this deck. And you can see it's very loose sketching. I'm not going, I'm not worried about my lines being very straight. I want that sketchy look. That's what I'm after. And then the mushroom continues through. It kind of bows out here. And then we'll put in a door, the main door in. So I'm do this one a square. Stuff's falling off my desk. So you can see, I'm just feeling my way out. That's what sketching is. So it's not so much drawing. I'm not putting in super fine details. I'm sketching. And I'm gonna darken up down here. Finish putting out my mushroom. So I like to curve the bottom of the mushroom out. Just kind of gives that door, excuse me, that door a little bit of a recessed feel. And then maybe I'll do the pathway here. Some stones. And then let's finish off the mushroom. So the mushroom would be round and continue behind. So the line drops below this line. And there's the form of our mushrooms. And then you can decorate and detail it however you like. Maybe you want a stone mushroom that's been put together with little facings of stone, or maybe you want to do it like a board and batting. You can leave it a mushroom itself, you know, and just put the kind of skin of the mushroom on there. You can do whatever you want. That's what's so fun about drawing these. So when we are shading in our mushroom and giving it an indication of some more form here. We always want to work in a contour. So if I went straight up and down or straight back and forth, it's going to flatten your image completely. And we want more of a shape. We want some form showing in this mushroom. So I'm curving my lines. I think of how the mushroom grows. If I were to hold one in my hand right now, this whole top of the mushroom curves up to the top and that's really important if you want to capture a little bit more realism. The more uh, form you can capture, the more realistic your drawing will look. So I'm just going to put this in here. And then the gills underneath. So again, they move around the mushroom. We have to indicate that in our sketch. So you can see I'm not going straight, I'm rotating around the mushroom, which is also very important to capture that form. Okay, so the door, if I darken inside the door here, it just kind of implies that it's recessed in a little bit. And then you could do a little, say, What's this stuff called? Molding around the door. Do molding around this door. So again, just feeling out my lines. No perfect lines here. It has that real sketch feel to it. Darken up the gap between the two doors. I like to put a darker line at the bottom of the door in the mushroom. I just find it helps ground the image a little bit. We're gonna put some more details in there after. 
So we could put little light fixtures here if we want. Little, little lanterns kind of thing. You know, whatever your imagination comes up with. Little lanterns on the sides, kind of cute. I put a fireplace in here. Not a fireplace, sorry, chimney. Because it gets cold in the winters. <laughs> Our fairies need some heat. So I've had a few requests to draw fairies and to be honest, I don't enjoy drawing fairies much. Um, I have difficulty with the scales of things when it comes to human forms. Uh, it's something I'm practicing, but I haven't, I haven't got there yet. So one day I will show you how to draw a fairy, but I can't teach you until I know how to do it myself. <laughs> Uh, I have trouble with faces. Now, I can draw a face if I really sit down and take my time, but drawing it and teaching it are two very different things. I have to be able to explain what it is I'm doing. And it's quite difficult when it's something as int uh, intricate as someone's face. So there are YouTube videos out there, though, that, that do show these things on how to... Um, draw fairies and things like that so if you're into the whole fairy thing so I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of bumps here because I, I want to kind of imply that texture and then I'm just gonna darken up the edge I want this mushroom really tucked in tight underneath here so I'm just scribbling away I hope you guys are drawing along with me let me know what you think and what maybe what you would like to see in future videos I'm always open to um, information of, and details of what it is you guys want to see on this channel I have been doing quite a bit of product reviews lately which has been really fun because it kind of opens up ideas on different materials and new takes on things so I'm really enjoying doing that um, but I wanted to get back to some sketching. This is just so much fun. So there, we've got a little bit of form going. You could put, say, a little bit of shading underneath this roof line. I mean, you could put as much detail as you want in these things. All right, so now we can do the mushroom itself. So I'm gonna just kinda do, let's do a board and batting. So like the window up here with the line. So it's all it's been covered in these wood panels. Just kind of fun and different. So I'm just continuing that all the way down. Where it shows through here, this would be actual platform here that's attached. So you've got your angles to the board here. So that's the platform they'd walk on when they come out the door. Though, I mean, I, you look at this, it, there's no way that door would fit on this balcony. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to open it, but it's just for fun. <laughs> and nothing's to scale. All right, so a little board and batting there. So now I'm gonna just shade in a little bit of shading in between the boards so you can see I'm not shading in the full line I'm just shading in random parts and that inconsistency makes it a lot less static looking and if I was just to draw these lines dark again so then under the balcony here for example you'd have a little bit of shade so I'm just going to do a little light touch underneath the balcony just lighter on the pencil. Just to indicate a little shading under there. And then maybe a little shading down here. And this is where you get to really play with what it is you want to do on your mushroom. So maybe the door is going to be a dark color. So I'm going to shade in the door. 
And of course, you can always use paper, pencil crayons or markers to shade and draw in your color on your mushrooms. I mean, it kind of be fun just to do a black and white mushroom and then paint the door, say, like an orange or something, just for a pop of color. Could be really fun. My hands are sore today. I was knitting a lot last night. Oh, my hands are tight. Oh, I'm going to stretch my hands. Sorry. There we go. Okay. do a little cross hatching here so where you go against you go like straight down and then you kind of cross hatch and build up shadow that's what cross hatching is just making sure I was in frame there <laughs> I'm notorious for going out of frame there we go so you can see there's a nice shadow underneath that balcony which moves the balcony forward and we're just gonna delicately getting the back end of the door here. All right, he's cute. So under this canopy would also cast a shadow in here. I'm just gonna fill that in a little bit. Again, you could do a little cross hatch. So when I do the cross hatch, I'm still thinking of the contour. I'm not going just straight across. Still want to imply that curve that the mushroom is round. All right, I like them. Okay. So let's do another one behind it. So we'll do maybe, um, what should we do? Let's do one of those. We'll do the same thing where we have that kind of fun uh, Chantilly mushroom, I think it's called. So they kind of grow upwards like this. And then we'll do a little indication of the top roof. Maybe it's got a little texture on there, some bumps. And then the same thing, the bottom part of the mushroom, the stem. I'll curve that out kind of give them wonky sides here. So you can see just sketching it out, just feeling it out. Not worried about making any mistakes. And again, you can use pencil for this. It's a little too intimidating to go straight to pen. And I'm gonna put the gills in. I like to use these uh, finer pens a nice thin line but you can use a thicker pen um, I can switch actually to my ballpoint just to show you so this is just a Bic I think just a dollar store pen uh, it's in black so let's see what this one looks like so it's a, a paler black ink but you can see you can do this with cheap pens too they don't have to be fancy pens the only difference here is I can't add water because these are not waterproof so you can see, you can use any pen you want. I'm gonna switch back so the color stays consistent in my sketch. But you don't have to have fancy, fancy stuff to do this with. You can use anything you want. Different width pens and different style of pens will create different marks. So this again, it's a felt tip type pen. So the ink flow is much slower than, say, the Vision one that I showed you earlier, which is an ink flow pen. So the, the ink just continuously flows as it's engaged with the paper. In this one, you have to actually push and pull the ink out, which is why you get that kind of thicker line at the start and washed out line at the end. So you kind of have to play with the markers and pens that you like and settle on something you like the best. So I'm just putting in these gills here. Again, remember your contours. Very important. Okay, and we'll curve up the top here as it reaches the top of the mushroom. 
and just tidy up those lines a little bit. So these drawings can be pretty time consuming depending how much detail you put in them. That's why you do want to make sure that you photocopy them or, or scan them to reuse them several times. Or maybe you're just so darn proud of your sketch you're putting it in a frame. That's fun too. It happens. You come along and you're just like, nailed it! I'm framing that sucker. <laughs> there we go. We'll put a little texture at the top here. Kind of a little indication of separation from the bottom to the top part of the mushroom. Coloring that in a little bit darker. Okay. I could sketch these all day long. Okay, so let's put the stem on this guy. So let's do maybe a window and do square again. I'm going to try and remember this mushroom comes out here, so I want to center this window. Frame it in, and then maybe give it some, what's it called, shutters. Just something different. So you can see how you have to determine what's in front and what's behind, especially when using a marker. Because I can't put the shutter in front now. I wouldn't anyways because this mushroom is behind this one. But those are the kind of things you want to think about when you're drawing. Something fun. And then maybe the crossbar in here. I'm just going to darken up because the light is making this room in silhouette back in here. Again, just sketching. I'm not worried that I filled that in. Not the end of the world. It's just a sketch. I find I do draw a little bit faster too when the camera is rolling. So these are little, these sketches are a little neater because it's just me and I'm taking my time kind of thing. So little wood boards here for shutters. It's cute. Okay, and then we'll come down. So that because this house is further back, the bottom of the house would recess further back. So I think I'm gonna do a door here. And let's do kind of like a round door on this one for fun. And then wood. Uh, let's do a window in it. Just a little window, kind of like a little hobbit door. Continue with the wood. Sorry if you can hear some rattling behind me, it's uh, my dehumidifier. I'm just going to rough up that wood a little bit so you see nothing straight. Put a little thin lines in there to show some wood grain. So just sip on your coffee and, and sketch here, no, no perfection just fun, loose, let your imagination take over. So I'm going to darken up underneath the doorway here because there would be a bit of a shadow in here as the door's recessed in the mushroom a little bit. And then you could do, say, a um, 
what's this called, like a stone finish around the door. You do it on the windowsill too. Just adding elements in. Just for fun. Okay, so that's that one. And I think we'll just leave this a mushroom. So we'll put some little dark spots in here and there. But just leave it kind of mushroom texture. I create, like creating these little kind of dark marks on the mushroom. Just add some interest. Go a little darker around the molding here, around the, uh, sorry, the stones. You could put potted plants, you could put a little bench. I did, the last one I did, I did little laundry lines in between the houses. I thought that was kind of cute. You can do different seasons, you know, snow on the roof. And shovels, little mini shovels leaning up against the houses, whatever you want. texture on these rocks just a little scribble in them just to show that they're they're not flat and then I want to darken up the door at the bottom here so it looks a little bit more grounded I also like kind of like roughing up the edge of the wood so that it doesn't look like it's perfectly cut and put a little step here So this would be the riser, and this angled out one would be the step, and then the riser. So that angle out there is important. Just shows the, if you did expose this side, this angle would go this way on this side. And then we'll go into the pathway, it's the cobblestone kind of thing. I'm just sketching out some stones. Maybe do some lawn here. A little bit of grass. So just scribbling. Random, very loose. And then I'm just gonna give the kind of like the background to the cobblestones a little dirt color. I'm not worrying about staying outside the lines. In this case, I'm just scribbling in that negative space to kind of pop those cobblestones a little bit more. Just really having fun with it. See what your imagination comes up with. Feel free to share your sketches on uh, Instagram with me. My link to my Instagram page is also in the description box. I love to see people's sketches and what they come up with and, you know, share ideas of little features you could put in, any kind of feature that you, you might come across in a house. Some architecture maybe that's famous to where you live. Some specific architectural features would be fun to incorporate, uh, you know, like a Tudor style. So if you live in the countryside or um, uh, you have that Tudor board and batting with the crisscrossing on it, it could be really fun. The Georgian style, um, some South American type uh, stucco, you know, anything, all that kind of fun stuff you can incorporate in. So now I'm going to just do some we could do another house. We could do something way off in the background if you wanted. 
we could try that. I haven't done that yet. So let's say the, the stone continues over here. So now you, all you have to think about is your perspective and your horizon line. Um, you do have to make sure that when you're drawing that in that you do consider the angle and perspective in which you're looking at these houses. So these are pretty close up, but we could put a house say back here little mushroom house and of course it's further back so it'll be a little bit smaller and we'd only see so much of it because the, the big ones in the front may be blocking it but you could build a whole neighborhood like a whole neighborhood of houses so that he's back there I'm gonna just color him in with his gills here so because he's nice and tight, I would probably just recede him back by darkening just a little bit more than the other. And then I'm gonna give him some texture on his little mushroom here. And then just a little bit of texture. Keep building up you can do another little one back here poking through and just keep going and going so remember what you what this guy's in front of you can't see so you can't draw it um, you're not gonna be able to see the whole house but you can do the pathway So these rocks would be more flattened out now because the perspective's further away. They wouldn't be round like this. They're more round in the front here, but they get flattened out as they move further back. And again, because it's far away, you don't need lots of detail. You're just kind of scribbling in and implying the texture of that pathway. That's it. And as they move forward, they would open up a little bit more. We'll make this all grass here. A little grassy front yard. I like to scribble in some messy uncut grass. And then I kind of put in a flat mode in grass here. Like that. So we can um, we can make this guy all stone, for example, kind of stone just for a different texture completely every little house has its own material construction material which is kind of fun and then we'll just stick to the wood door and then we kind of color in the what would that stuff be called? Grout of some kind. And we'll color that in a little bit darker. And you see, very loose. I'm not taking my time sketching in or worrying about staying in the lines. I want that sketchy look. Now, if I wanted something cleaned up, I would, like on my sketch here, I can put it in my Procreate program and tidy it up a little bit. But I do like the sketch look. And then I'm just going to, you can see the contrast of the dark and light, which makes these rocks look very flat. So now I'm just going to scribble in. So instead of holding my pen like this, where I get a thicker line, I'll hold my pen back on an angle and it creates this very thin line. I'm just creating a little bit of texture on those rocks and you see I'm literally just scribbling over top of them that tones them down and it implies that they're not flat white marks that they are actual material darken up the door a little and I like to darken the windows So cute. So you go, you have another little house further back on the street. And you can just keep building and building. I'm just going to darken the edge here just to kind of help 
separated away from this one because I didn't think I was going to draw another one. I went a little darker in the front here than I would if I knew I was putting something behind it. So I'm just separate, helps visually separate the two buildings by darkening up a little bit in here. All right, so now we can do, let's say um, if you want a fence line back here. I mean, this video can keep going and keep going. I love the little picket fence look. And then maybe a gate. I'm just gonna rotate it, sorry, it's a bit easier on my wrist. And then align those boards. And then maybe a little thing here. Let's put the fence piece going across. Now that I should have done first. So that these lines don't show through, but I'll just darken it up a little bit. I just like the, the look of how the gate is made kind of thing. And then continue on with the fence. Of course you can put the cross fencing that they're nailed to in here. So you can see how they're kind of held in. A little bit of texture in that wood, very thin. And then again, I like to kind of darken the bottom just a little bit helps ground the image. Or you could put a little bit of grass in front. So there's a fence line there. You can put trees back here, you can put anything you want. I like to do like whimsical things, like these little simple plants. Kind of cute little whimsy fern looking things coming off the side. That's that's what I like to do, but you can put little fir trees in here, whatever you want. I think it's just so cute and so fun. It helps fill in this negative space too a little bit visually, kind of adds a little detail, breaks up the negative space. All right. So that's today's little tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope it kind of gives you uh, some inspiration. Uh, for perspective and things like that, you do want to practice where the mushrooms sit. So like we said, this one is obviously closest to us. And then further back, even though this house is bigger than this one, it still sits further back because of the way we've drawn it behind. And then this mushroom could be as big as this one, but it's way far back. So you can see how far back it is. So we scale it down a little. Um, I have talked about perspective before on how to achieve things like distance. I can do a little quick lesson here. So you remember when you were kids, you have your horizon line here, and then you have your, your train track coming towards you. So you have your train track here, and then it gets big here and then and further apart and as it gets further away it gets smaller and closer together so it kind of creates that distance the same with the road if you've got the road that comes out of the the mountain for example the road disappears in the horizon it again has this narrow and then widens same with the lines in between the road they would get smaller and smaller and closer together so those kind of things perspective wise are fun to play with. Um, then you can also do things where you've got, say the street line is here and you've got your houses, but then you've got say another street back here up on a hill. Uh, so this these houses would cover say here and then the houses behind it up on the next street would be significantly smaller looking because they're further away. So distance between your original foreground to your distance in the background, your scale will change and it keeps changing as things get further and further away. Um, things like perspective in angles as well, I've, I've gone over um, a few times as well with um, how, um, if you Google my uh, bird drawing, 
uh, birdhouse drawings on how to do a vanishing point. Uh, a vanishing point can apply to these drawings as well, especially if, say you're drawing them on an angle where you're putting in the side perspective of say like, like this dormer here, this would have a vanishing point. This would vanish over to this way. And it's basically just picking a point and then drawing those shapes to that point. So here's the roof line, for example. And then I have the dormer. So this is a super quickie lesson. I mean, you can really Google more details, but it just kind of helps give you a little bit of uh, perspective and helps create more realistic images if you can visualize the stuff in your head while you're sketching. Uh, so here's the front of the dormer, and because we're drawing it on the side, how much of the dormer we see is based on how much uh, of what perspective we're using. So we're going to use, say, this much of the dormer. So now I can see this much on the side of the object, right? So this is the side, this is the front with the window. So that's called a vanishing point. You can have several, van two, three vanishing points in your sketches, depending how elaborate you want to get. I mean, these are pretty simplified. This is kind of more of a cartoon style, but then you can get pretty elaborate with these perspectives and how you can put things further back. So this is again, one dimensional, it's just straight across, but you could technically draw more mushrooms on another street behind and you would scale that down. So just some little tips that hopefully it help improve your, your drawing. I hope you liked today's video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. Um, let me know what kind of things you do want to see on this channel. Um, what kind of things we can explore together. Um, always up for suggestions. And uh, again, if you're interested, pop by my Etsy shop. And uh, it really helps support the channel. And uh, we go from there. We'll see you uh, next week. And I'll uh, see what we come up with next week. I'm not sure what's coming up. I've got a couple more product reviews. And I've been working on um, a fall book here. I'm getting into the fall season. I've got some really fun scrap papers that I've found. And uh, we'll, we'll develop some stuff there and have some fun. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye.